Hey, I hope that uh, you enjoyed the songs that we put on the playlist today for the worship service. Uh, both the songs were just perfect for today's sermon. You know, God fights for us. He's on our side. He's for you. And so this message really, I, I just want to emphasize that the God of today is the same God of yesterday and tomorrow. And the way he looked after his people uh, in Egypt as they were in slavery, he came to their rescue. He fought for them. God was for them. He remembered his covenant. So too will God fight for us. And I want to encourage you with that today. Hey, we're uh, preaching today from Exodus chapter 14, verses 15 through 31. But to kind of set that up, I'm going to bring in some of the Bible passages you've been reading this week through the uh, reading through the Bible in chronological order. I hope you're doing that. You can go on our website, sunnyhillschurch.com. The very first sentence on the first page will give you a link to the the resource we're using to do that. And I just encourage you to do that. If if you fall behind, don't try to catch up. Just read what's for today and uh, that'll get you back on track. OK, hey, let's look at uh, some of the characters we've seen already as we've read through the Bible. These are some of the all stars. Of course, uh, the Bible is full of all kind of personalities and persons that uh, interact with God and and are recorded in history like Adam and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Then Joseph and his brothers, uh, together they became the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, we finally get to the part in the book of Exodus, though, where Joseph and his brothers, they all died, and it was the next generation. And so uh, uh, Pharaoh, a king, arose in Egypt that didn't have regard for Joseph or the Israelites for, for the Hebrews. And so um, they were subjugated to slavery. And it was pretty rough on them. The, the Egyptians were very hard on God's people. So God raised up Moses from amongst the people and used him in a powerful way. Let's look today at how God rescued them. And how God still rescues us today. These are some principles that I just... Now, as I read along, I thought, man, this is really cool how God interacted with the people of God in that day. And as I say, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So he's still listening to his people when they cry out for rescue. I don't know about you, but from time to time, I'm just like, God, I need some help around here, you know. God, I need you to come help. Uh, make your presence known among, among me and my family and my church. God, rescue me, is my cry. And that's what uh, they experienced in the book of Exodus, in Exodus 2. During that long period, the king of Egypt died, and the Israelites groaned in their slavery. They cried out in their cry for help because of their slavery. It went up to God. God heard them. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant. It's not that he forgot. Uh, God hadn't you know, gone off and done other things. He had always knew his people were there. But sometimes, you know, God just responds to our cries for help. And so don't be afraid to pray. Don't be a pray, afraid to cry out to God for help. God remembers his people. So God looked down on the Israelites and he was concerned about them. God's heart is for us. Uh, he's not against us. God pursues us. He went to the extreme of sending his own son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross. Now, in the book of Matthew, this is a little side note. Many Bible scholars look at the book of Matthew and they see how Matthew kind of equates Jesus as the modern day Moses, the rescuer, that Jesus is the new lawgiver, Moses, the old lawgiver. Jesus, the new rescuer, bringing his people out of sin. Moses, the old lawgiver who rescued his people out of slavery. But anyway, God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Then in verse chapter 3, verse 9, And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now he says it's, it's more than just he saw the plot of the Israelites, that he heard their cries, but he was moved to action. He appointed Moses to go and rescue and go to speak 
to Pharaoh. So go now. I am sending you, Moses, to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. It was time for action. And God was at the front of the line leading Moses uh, to rescue uh, the Israelites out of Egypt. So God hears us when we cry out to him. And guess what? We get to participate in our own rescue. Now, there are times, certainly in the Old Testament, there are times in this story where the people just have to kind of sit back and they watch God do his thing. But when it came to Moses, Moses was invited by God to participate, in fact, lead the rescue. So Moses, uh, in Exodus chapter 4, now, now go, I will help you, Moses, and I will teach you what to say. But Moses said, what a verse this is. Exodus 14, 13. Imagine uh, standing before God and saying this, uh, pardon me, Lord, pardon your servant. Please send someone else. I don't know if you've ever felt like that. If you ever felt the job was too big or the task too large. But remember, it is God who sends us, God who enables us. And God who sometimes, like in this case, he kind of works out a deal with Moses. He says, understand you can't talk too good. And maybe you're worried that, that Pharaoh won't listen to you. So the Lord equips Moses with a helper. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he said, okay, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well, and he is already on his way to see you. And he will be glad uh, to assist you, to see you along the way. And so God does provide Moses with a helper. And then he says, you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. And I will help both of you. So the chain of command was like from the Lord to Moses to to uh, his brother Aaron. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if your mouth and as if you were God to him. And then he equips him with a tool. He gives him the stick, the staff. And I don't remember if you remember reading, he would throw the staff down on the ground. It would turn into snake, a snake. There was this one part of the story where he's before Pharaoh and to demonstrate that God is with him, Moses throws his staff down. And then the magicians in Pharaoh's court, they throw their sticks down and they turn into serpents as well. <laughs> and then Moses' snake gobbled up the others just to demonstrate how much stronger the Lord is than these magical powers uh, of the Pharaoh's uh, court. But take this staff with you in your hand so that you can perform the signs with it. So God is with us. He's for us. He fights for us, but he invites us to participate in our own rescue and then gives us helpers along the way and even the tools that we need for our own rescue. Now, sometimes during a rescue, there's conflict. You know, one of the things that lifeguards learn is that when they go out to rescue someone who's drowning and in their desperation, the drowning person um, might fight them off, might pull them under. And so one of the parts of learning how to rescue someone is how to avoid conflict. Here's this very interesting verse in Exodus chapter 4, verse 24. Boy, I read this. I just did a double take. I'm like, what? And so the Bible records this at a lodging place on the way. This is as Moses is headed to Pharaoh to do, do the job that God's called him to do. The Lord met him and sought to put him to death. Uh, many Bible scholars say maybe the Lord uh, afflicted Moses with a poison or with a disease. Uh, oh, Moses was fading fast. And as I tried to understand this passage, apparently it's about uh, Moses' son by his Midianite wife who was never circumcised. Circumcision back in Genesis 17, 11, uh, sort of was this sign, this, this deal that the Lord made with the Israelites. I will make this covenant with you, and as a sign of your acceptance, you need to circumcise all your male children. Well, Moses hadn't done that. He had uh, agreed to uh, his, Midian, not his Midianite's wife. Uh, she didn't go along with that. 
And Moses said, okay, honey, whatever. Well, it, that didn't suit the Lord. And if he was going to have Moses at the front, at the charge, Moses had to be obedient, first of all. Boy, when you accept a position of leadership, I'm a pastor in a church. Maybe you're the leader of a Sunday school class. Maybe you're a, a person in charge at your workplace. Leaders are called to a higher standard. Le leaders need to obey first because people will be following you. And so as a result of this interaction, the child is circumcised and uh, Moses is allowed to continue on. But boy, this when I first read this, it's really troubling. There are, are times when you're following the Lord and he will interrupt you, right? He's done that to me. And he will trouble you or he'll call your attention to a sin or a fault that needs to be corrected before you can move forward. But the conflict can go the other way too. Moses is kind of upset with the Lord. So we just saw that the Lord was upset with the rescuer, Moses, and the rescuer was upset with him who had called him, the Lord. Moses returned to the Lord and said, why, Lord, why have you brought this trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh, you can almost hear Moses's voice getting louder. I went there to speak in your name, and he's brought trouble on this people. And Lord, you've not rescued your people at all. I mean, Moses is pretty frustrated here. Moses thought that the rescue was ruined. And it is true that from time to time, uh, People who need to be rescued don't trust, like the firefighter. You know, come this direction, jump into the, to this net. Maybe they have a hard time trusting their physician who recommends a certain course of treatment. Maybe their pastor suggests something, and it's it's hard to believe that they would would suggest that. Now, look, all of us are responsible to seek out the Lord and to understand what he wants for us. But from time to time, the Lord will bring people into our lives who try to help us. At least give them a listen. Compare what they say to God's word. Seek the Holy Spirit's counsel and do what you think God wants you to do. Now, God is definitely strong enough to rescue us, right? Now, there's a lot of the, there's these 10 plagues, the plague of frogs and the plague of blood and uh, locusts. Um, my favorite is the plague of gnats because it's something I can relate to. I've never seen a bunch of frogs everywhere. Or I've never seen water turn to blood. But boy, I've been in one of these clouds of gnats. Have you ever done that? You're, especially when you walk maybe from the sun into the shade of a tree, there's a cloud of gnats there. And the Lord brought this huge cloud of gnats upon Egypt. I mean, so much so that the sun was blocked out. I mean, it was gnats, gnats, breathing gnats, spitting them out. They were everywhere. And then if you remember earlier, I said the magicians were able to reproduce the snakes. But they were not able to reproduce the gnats. Exodus 8, 18 and 19. But when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not. Since the gnats were on people and animals everywhere. And the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. As I was thinking about this and the, the strength of the Lord, his ability to help us and to rescue us. He created um, all, all those gnats, as the magician said, but just, the, just a touch, just a finger. Think what the fist of God might be able to do if a, just the finger is able to do that and god will impress others to help you cool part of the story kind of a side note like how would the israelites make it out in the desert when they get to their new land how will they be able to purchase goods or or how will they get along and it just so happened the lord took care of that detail the lord walks ahead of us he's already working out the details of our life's adventure in advance he does that with the Israelites, Exodus 12, the Israelites did as Moses instructed, and they asked the Egyptians 
for articles of silver and gold and for clothing their neighbors. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed towards the people, and they gave them whatever they asked, so that they plundered the Egyptians. As the Israelites were leaving Egypt, they would just knock on the door. May I have all your gold and silver? And the people of Mass would say, sure. And they go and give all their gold and silver, their jewelry, their cups, their fine things, their clothing. And they would load the Israelites down with all their valuables. And God worked it out. God impressed them to do that. Just a cool side story. God is for us. He fights for us. And God will use leaders to guide you along the way. He used Moses and Aaron. All the Israelites did just what the Lord had commanded to Moses and Aaron. And on that very day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt by their divisions. I love that little phrase, by their divisions. I mean, it sounds like it was like an organized thing. That the Lord talked to Moses. Moses talked to Aaron. Aaron talked to the all the different leaders of the different clans. And they came out in order. And I just love that God was able to work it out. God will use leaders to guide you. Maybe a pastor or a teacher or a friend, maybe a counselor, someone you look up to. You know, all of us from time to time maybe lead others, but we ourselves need to be led from time to time. And so if God brings into your life someone who's wise, someone who follows is following himself the Lord, then maybe the Lord could use that person as a leader in your life. And the Lord is a mighty warrior, a mighty warrior who fights for his people. You know, there was a, a, a lot of what happened in Egypt was like Moses to Pharaoh and kind of bargaining back and forth. There's several negotiations along the way. Pharaoh always ends up saying, no, the Lord hardens his heart. But there comes a time in the story when Moses and the Israelites are walking through the desert and now their backs are against the Red Sea. And they see the chariots of Pharaoh approaching, and, and they're trapped. What will they do? Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Now, Moses is only half right. Certainly, the Lord was going to fight for them. And at that moment, they were standing still. That There would be a time, again, when they would be called to assist in their own rescue. And so the Lord jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. Because they're standing there, and here come the, the charioteers. But the Lord, I don't know, uh, made the, he disabled the chariots. Some Bible translations say that the, the wheels of the chariots literally fell off. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from these Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Moses said, Moses said, the Lord will fight for you, right? Moses said that. And the Egyptians <laughs> agreed. Man, uh, earlier the magician said that the Lord's finger was on uh on the situation and now that fist of God has risen and he's collapsed their chariots and it's uh, it's quite a sight. In Exodus 15 there's this uh, song of Moses and this is a song that was written uh, after these events you know it's the people worshiping and remembering these events and here's how the song goes the Lord is my strength and my defense he has become my salvation he is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. When you think of the Lord, maybe you think of a, a tender father. Maybe you think of Jesus, the gentle shepherd. Maybe you think of the Lord as like an old man with a white beard, kind of wise and mature. I love how uh, Moses and the people here describe the Lord. There are times in our lives when man, we need a warrior at our side. There are times when we need God just to take control of the situation. Maybe that's your need today. 
Uh, maybe uh, it's beyond counseling. Maybe it's beyond wisdom. And God just needs to take up the battle for you. Exodus 15, 19. When Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Isn't that remarkable? Dry ground. It's a miracle. I mean, can it be anything else? I know historians and critics and skeptics through the years have said, how can this be? Well, how can a lot of things be without the hand of God? This story only makes sense if, as we said earlier, God heard them, God remembered the covenant, God decided to take action, and then God, if God has the power to do it, then the method of him doing it is, is up to him, and he decided to send them right through the middle of the Red Sea. So here's the question to consider today. Where do I need the Lord to rescue me? You know, sometimes people are in need of rescue. They don't even realize it. Maybe the bridge is about to collapse. Maybe there's a tornado just over the horizon. Maybe they're at sea and the storm is beginning to brew. I don't know where you are in your world or where, are, where you are in your walk with Christ or what your personal situation is. But ask the Lord today, Lord, is there any place you need to rescue me from? Do you need to snatch me out of something? Let's pray about that today. Here's the closing prayer. I just want to read the prayer first, and then we'll close our eyes, and I'll lead us in the closing prayer. Dear God, as we consider this story of Moses and the rescue of Israel, show me where I can respond to your leadership. I want you to think of this story as being personal, not something that just happened 4,000 years ago, but the same God who was in charge of Moses and the Israelites then is in charge of us today. Show me where I can respond to your leadership and find hope for what troubles me. I declare you are a mighty God who's for me and fights for me. I praise your strong name. Let's close the message with prayer today. Dear God, as we consider the story of Moses and the rescue of Israel, Show me where I can respond to your leadership and find hope for what troubles me. Oh God, I declare you are a mighty God. You're for me. You fight for me. I praise your strong name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much. Try to stay warm this weekend. Going to get cold again. Be safe out there and hope you have a great weekend.